um, but maybe it's bumpy. So you want to maybe lower higher pressure to play a little bit. Then it's soft white, but then it may be not as efficient. But the main thing is never go under the minimum required PSI. That's 35 PSI, that's 45 PSI. And yeah, mostly the pump will kind of gauge. Uh, you just generally want to be firm and not, you know, deflate it. Because the old inner tube system, when too low a tire pressure, it's going to start, there's too much room between the tire and the inner tube. They start robbing each other. And, uh, uh, and they can uh, thin the inner tube even more and boom, the puncture, we call it pinch flat from inside the tire. Most of the flat tire repair come to the shop because people don't pump the tires. It's preventable. Okay, so pump your tires. What about the tube I have in the back there? Does that? You still gotta pump it. See, that's, that's, that, yeah, you still gotta okay. pump it. It's got an inner tube inside. Yeah. You don't pump it, you gotta pinch flat from inside. And okay. that will suck because it's puncture resistant. And even your original tire, it comes with additional layers. There's a Kapla insert to be more puncture resistant, right? So, um, so generally it deflects most of the punctures. Okay? So pump your tires, and I would say initially track it once a month at least, maybe every other week as well. Right? The uh, the inner tube inside is an air, it's a skin thing. The the air, unlike cars, the tires are thick. They hold the air better. But here the, the air escapes. So every other week check it and go as high as 70, um, unless you find it too bumpy. Okay. Good. Now. To your braking, uh, Norca cell is equipped with that Shimano pretty high grade hydraulic disc grips, front and back. And we have experienced that it's not, you don't need to squeeze so hard, right? It's about like cars, not how hard you press on it, but how much you bring it in, right? They already, any resistance you feel is already engaging and will come to stop pretty quickly, right? When you overstress it, what happens, you're gonna bring. There's so much more braking power, five times more braking power than regular cable brake. It will burn the, the brake pad even more. And hence, uh, usually resulting in, uh, result in uh, squeaky brakes. Because it's so dirty, the rotor, it's just all the residual from the brake pad. And when, it's, when it continues to burn, it just continues to make noises. So gentle braking is nice. Anticipate your braking distance. Never try to do it so last minute. Give it as much distance as possible. That's very also for safety, right? And uh, when you break it, I want you to emphasize no break. I want you to do it evenly, left and right, front and back, just even pressure, right? Um, your cell is very thoughtfully uh, offsetting the size of the rotors. 180 in the front, 160 in the back, slightly bigger here. So it will apply the ultimate breaking power ultimate distribution of braking power front and back, right? So just do it even and you don't need to emphasize any brake. So that's your braking. And um, there's not much there. Now to your locking system here. Your locking system, uh, so Giselle gives you this, uh, they call it cafe lock. Or well, let's say the, the lock will have a pin through the wheel and stop the spokes from turning. So people can ride away with it. Now, sure, it's effective to a certain degree, but not in all cases. They can still lift it and put it on the truck. Although most of them don't drive a truck around, they drive a truck, they're not stealing bikes. Right? So, um, this is super convenient, super common, popular in Europe too. So you lock it in from the other side then? You lock it in by, by yes. pushing something here? Yeah. The lever from the other side will show you exactly how to use. But use this lock. The scenario you want to use it is like in front of the shop, coffee shop, hence the name cafe lock. Like the bike's still in your sight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, then it's uh, it's quick, it's convenient, and it's actually better than locking it a block away to a bike rat you cannot see. Right. So. So that's how you sort of use it. You will have enough response time to keep up with a guy who tries to lift it like this. Right. Okay. So now exactly how they work. Um, you have a you need two hand operations. 
the lever you want to push it down but it is locked in by design so it's a lot of safety there doesn't to prevent to prevent when it, the wheel is spinning possibly locking it like you know by your hand or whatever like as, as you ride to prevent that it requires the key to be turned first so you can move the lever okay. if you don't turn the key unlocking it first at the first place it does not go okay. so requires two hand operation so you turn the key then you can move otherwise it don't go okay. turn the key move go all the way decisive firm uh -huh. then locked okay. the second safety feature it does have pretty smart and thoughtful as well is the key is only removable when the lock is properly engaged if you could not pull out the key that means your cafe lock is not properly engaged try it again only when it's safely locked you can pull out the key there's no other chances you can pull out the key okay hence during the ride the key stays in by design you will never lose your key we love the system in our rental fleet we never lose the key now before you give it to somebody they always lose the key yeah. right. Okay. Okay. right so it stays in and locked right down uh, to unlock it simply just shut it don't need two hands, one hand. My key is not there. Your key is there. Look again. It is? Oh, this? Okay. Yeah, okay. Same key, unlock the batteries. Okay. okay. Same key, unlock the batteries. And the keyhole is here on this plate. Your keyhole is on the left hand side there. Okay. Right, so here. Yeah, just turn it, it pops. That same idea. You turn it, it pops. Um, but it won't come out on its own without you clicking one more time in the middle there and I'm gonna bring the battery out and show you what I mean you're gonna oh. click it one more time okay. same with your battery as well they try to so it's another safety thing that's good safety measure so the battery won't even you unlock it it's not gonna drop to the floor in the ground without you actively press it one more time and so it's two-step operation okay remember why would you need to take the battery out uh, good question we'll get to that um, the the uh, yeah do not attempt to pull it out without pressing this you will break it okay yeah same with that by two and when would you want to pull it out because uh, I think two scenarios great question one is uh, the charging power source is too far away right then you can't bring it to the charging port over there so you bring the battery upstairs, whatever, in the office to charge. Second scenario is, if you park somewhere you don't feel very safe, remove the battery, bring it with you, it just minimize your potential loss. And maybe make the bike less attractive to the guy. But if he's gonna steal something, he's gonna steal it, right? So, but at least you save a $1,200 battery here, right? Your battery is $1,200, both of yours. There's a 500 watt hour battery. Yeah, so to bring the battery back inside is to bottom in first. Same with your bike there, Tim. And then you gotta turn the key to let it in, kinda unlocking it, and just go all the way. Easy, quick. Put it in, you don't need to click on anything, just bring it in. Okay, so that's and your battery you charge. You can charge it when it's attached to the bike. You can charge it when it's attached to the bike. So if the power source is nearby, when I kind of remember the bike is gonna be in a storage room uh, yeah yeah that's good if the power source is nearby within six feet they come with a charger then you can just charge it here without removing the battery so that's very convenient here or team's play is right here get it open there okay and um, to bring it back in most people don't realize this little this little click is not centered okay. if you realize it's not centered you just have to find the pressure point if you keep pressing the middle it won't secure itself it's still flapping around you just have to find where that little little nozzle or something like nipple there is find the pressure point it's very easy to get in okay so that's a frustration point for some who doesn't know um, but give that with you now back to your back wheel over here i do want to point out a couple things the kickstand is adjustable 
but everything looking great to me now. I like it to be fairly vertical, especially you have low here. You don't want the blade to be leaning too much. It might break the case then. And then uh, um, gear shifter, friendly reminding us, the moment you shift the gears, you want to release the pressure on your pedal. Go easy on it. Otherwise you hear clunk, clunk, clunk. There's so much the tension on the chain does not help does not help the chain to lead a set of the teeth mm -hmm. a cough moving to the next one right it's gonna change position pulling it it doesn't change very very smoothly so but if you let go the pressure it will change and there's no noise when you change without pressure but when it's a pressure it will change very like bang 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 right now your flush is uh, one of the very few systems in the market that actually knows you are engaging sh gears, shifting gear, so-called gear shifter sensor. And it will know to drop the power a little bit. It's so subtle, most people don't even notice. Um, so that's nice to help. And uh, try to shift gear one gear at a time. Okay? Don't do multiple times. If there's a bite inside there, the chain dropped. It got stuck and broke. So, that's what happens when you try to change multiple gear at once. Uh, increase the chances of chain dropping. Both of your bikes actually got a clutch. That's pretty neat. So that's engaged. This derailleur doesn't move. The chain tension is more tense. I just want to make sure your clutch is engaged. Now it's engaged. That's too loose. Yeah, I should engage that. Perfect. So that's better. So there's better, better tension on the chain, more performance. A good thing we do a double check over there. A punch. So now the invader doesn't move easy. Okay. It still can move, but it has more tension. Okay. If I if I disengage it, yeah. it's just very loose. Why yeah. would you want to disengage or engage it? What would be the reason to do that? We don't want to chain slack. Okay. When the chain slack, when you change, it bounce, it dances okay. around, and that's when the chain dropping. Okay. We call it, or it doesn't ship as snappy. So now it's more snappy, snappy shifting. No, no, no. The question was, why would you disengage it? What for? Oh, disengage it well for because if you do need to remove the wheel, oh, okay. you need this to be loose so you can get the chain out of it. Right. But when you ride Otherwise, it, the chain you can. When you ride it, there's no point of disengaging. Correct. Unless you want a very sloppy chain. I guess no, you don't. Yeah, why not? Why? Yeah. Okay, so uh, your rear rack is super heavy too, eh? heavy duty. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I know Gwen's not using it, that's a good idea. Um, and the Dutch play, you can even certainly double the pressure. There's so much sturdiness to it. Twice as big a bolt as any North American bike, and also got a hardened steel connecting back to the frame. So that's very good stuff there. Um, I will also want to say here that's your speed sensor. I want to point out this is a magnet, and that's a sensor. That's how this oh. computer will know how fast the bike goes okay. every time the magnet passes. Okay. And right here. This one actually, I want to readjust it a little bit, in a bit. Um, so, we, we want this to point it to where the icon is. That's called proper alignment. It can't go here, it, can't, it won't pick up signal there, 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 but except here, specifically. It's got to screw the bites into the spoke, generally very tight. But if you accidentally kick it, misalign, what happens next? It doesn't know speed, right? You know what happens next? As a safety measure and also compliance to uh, the regulation, Bosch is going to cut out the power to prevent someone going faster than 32 km per hour. Oh. Right? So even if you ride slow, it doesn't know speed, it's going to cut out power. So, hence, the only troubleshooting thing that happening here on this bike from our experiences, 99% of times, when you're supposed to have power but you don't have power, it's as simple as that speed sensor misalignment. You realign the sensor, you get your power back on. The Bosch is that robust. You don't see any issues. Unless the bike is damaged during shipping, then we're going to find out within the week. 
otherwise the boss is indestructible. Um, so that's a speed sensor and we covered the lock, everything. Now to the cockpit. Your bell flipping, your gear shifting already learned, downshift, upshift. And um, uh, everything's highly adjustable. Adjustment, we do it. Uh, if you don't need to know, I'd rather not show you. And then we have, um, uh, so just bear in mind too, right? Like Tim, your right now is set to neutral. So I can bring your handlebar back maybe inch and a half forward an inch, right? Okay. So I can do all those kind of adjustments. And uh, now to your uh, electronic displays. You have a little cheat sheet here, it's four buttons. Four buttons. It says here, on and off switch. That's power, on and off. Yes. And here plus is for more power, we already know. But why is that light? Because that's a hidden second function of the plus button. When you hold it long enough, it becomes a light switch. Okay, so that's a reminder there, a little sheet. You can peel it off after you get it. Yeah. And minors, see a second function here, it says trip slash total slash range. So when you, when you tap it, it's less power. But when you hold it long enough, these functions will become valid, like, will, will come on. So you hold it long enough, you get to change the display to see trip distance. Okay. You can get to see total distance. You can get to see even estimated range. How far can you still go with your current charge? And uh, yeah, and talk more about that. And that's the reset for the trip? Reset is two together. Okay. So you can reset your trip distance. Mm -hmm. You can reset your range. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna talk to you about uh, what happened with range there. I might as well explain it right now. The range, they're smart, these guys. It's actually recording and taking actual data. What's the power consumption in the past 10 kilometers in order to forecast well, how, much, how much longer you can go. So it's dynamic. Oh. It's constant learning, it's adaptive, it's dynamic. How right? much longer the battery will let you go? Correct. Oh, okay. Based on actual writing data. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's actually quite possible for you to see even a higher number range at the end of your trip. Oh. If you have been pretty proficient riding it with using the gears and everything. Oh. Yeah. Can I find that out before I, before I leave? Can you find it out before you leave? What yeah. do you mean? Like, a range? A range, yeah. Yeah, you, you will. But, uh, but right now, because it's such a brand new bike. Okay. So that Needs range. To learn my Exactly, it has to learn. So whatever that number is, I don't think it's highly relevant. Okay. Um, so it will learn, and then and then, but hence the reset, right? Because you can reset the range back to what average person will do according to Bosch. Average person, will, we're gonna see it. Average person will do about 120 kilometers on Eco, okay. where I've seen people do 180, quite a few. And that all depends on the gears that you're in. How you how you how how well you know to use the gears. Okay how much you pedal and the terrain like let's say the tire inflation actually does a big deal you can do 10 percent to the range right so there's a lot of better uh, factors are going to come in play the wind and all of that um so that's range and then lastly the four button the last button is a walk assist they call it so the bike will walk itself the bike will walk itself for those who have paid for your bike, you're very lucky. We won't charge <laughs> additional. What do you mean for for who bike? hasn't bought it, is what do you mean the bike? Is? <laughs> What's that mean? The bike will walk itself. I'll show you how. Okay. Um, so it will even walk you right? if you engage it. Yeah. That really helped. I uh, say the best scenario I find a walk assist is like I I don't walk up the stairs anymore. I don't lift the bike anymore. I just roll it up the stairs. It goes on its own, right? I use it for stairs. Oh, I didn't it's, know that. Good to okay, know. It's okay flat, you know, it's sure, you know, it's heavier by but like, fine. I can hmm. just walk it like that, right? But up the hill, driveway, ramp, steep hills, you can just walk, which we're going to show you now. Okay, now that we've gone through the four buttons, we'll take a look at exactly how they work. On and off over here, sure, tap it, right? Don't need to hold it, tap it, it comes on in a second tap again it turns it off right so that's your power button now a lot of people actually don't know and another thing that we appreciate the German thoughtfulness is um, and only Bosch does this offers this 
Um, you can turn, the second way to turn on the bike is by back pedaling. And it's quite intuitive because most say it's off right now and most cyclists are on the bike like that pedal position is not right so what yeah. i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get my pedal position right and then i'm gonna go okay. it's on okay so your back pedal is on or you just keep on riding and realize my system is not there i back pedal and the system turn on i just go so back pedal can turn on the bike or you just press the button it's also pretty simple there right and now that we're seeing uh speed assist level and batteries right okay. they're also indicating to me that the light is on yeah with the eye with the icon there right right yeah then we can see that it's on front and back you got your side beams as well so it's pretty safety the whole tires are reflective so it's actually a lot of safety around it uh, same with your bike there tim wow um now if you hold so the light light switch now uh Brian, let's have some muscle memories to turn off the bike, the, oh sorry, to turn off the light is to hold the pulse. Okay. Yeah, the light is on now. Let's okay. say I want to turn it off. What do we do? We hold the pulse long enough until that little icon disappears. Okay. Then say the light's off. Okay. Right? And you reckon, I mean, we don't use the light at night, right? Or uh, us? Oh, that's yeah. a great. I actually recommend um, the light on all day. Oh, okay. Does it drain the battery? very little right because it's LED is very energy efficient 7 watt but you have 500 watt hour battery pack by, by map that's what right so not a great deal all right so it doesn't really do much to distance and um, and why not have more visibilities right you got a huge battery here right so uh, so we leave the light on during the right and uh, now we see here that says off right now and the minus when I hold it it will show different information right it will show that okay the three nine kilometers uh, the which you can also reset it by holding the two together to zero mm -hmm. so this will be helpful that like you want to see how much you do for the day for the week you know keeping some personal goals and so you can do that and hold one more time we get to see the total so this bike actually has some, uh, just a little minimum test bike on it, 29 kilometers of longer. And no one can change the settings, right? No one can change the settings. So that's awesome too. Now the range we can see now, with the three bars, Eco, Echo, we're seeing 38 kilometers. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I actually don't know if it's high or low, so I'm just gonna reset that. Let's see what happens. 40 okay tiny okay. little bit change so 40 is uh, what average person will do on this three bars right now okay. and i actually suspect it's only two bars it's going to drop to two very quickly uh -huh. the fully charged you show about 120 yeah so this is actually pretty low right and now how long does it take to fully charge ah great question uh your gazelle it's uh comes with a, a 4m fast fast charger faster charger okay. it's two type of chargers so instead of eight hours standard charging time this one here and that one there, um, or all the cells actually, they don't even advertise it. Like they should advertise. They don't advertise it. Um, so it's automatic upgrade to a four-hour charging charger. So it takes no more than four hours to fully charge your battery. Um, in other words, it's kind of one bar, approximately one bar per hour, right? So it's two, two, two out of five. Then I'll just charge it a couple hours mm -hmm. and it's back to a full, right? And battery that you should run down a bit before you charge again? Exactly the opposite. Okay. Exactly the opposite. The type of battery that will be um, when you run up, run down, that's much older technology or that's lower quality stuff. Okay. And so over here there's um, uh, so on the battery charging topic, hey I have a copyright for this one huh? I have an analogy for it. I'll put it on no, your no, no, Facebook page. No, the whole video page. is good. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this analogy I'm going to give you about battery maintenance, uh, it's pretty accurate and hopefully it helps with memorizing. Is I, uh, I call it, uh, think of your battery like a little baby human. Okay. Pressure. Uh, fragile. Can be fussy as well. Okay. So what happened there is, um, um, because this this what I'm telling you is to help maximize along the lifespan of the batteries. Right? 
doing the right thing, then the battery lasts maximum. Maximum 800,000 cycles by far. Right? So that's, that's easily a 50,000 kilometers or something. You know? like it's, it's a lot. So, um, the, so why I call it a baby? Because generally it doesn't want you to overcharge it, it doesn't want you to undercharge it. So what happens is the thing like for our little human too, when it's 100% full and you keep feeding the baby, what happens? The baby is going to puke, right? That's yeah. no good. Yeah. And, and do we want to feed the baby 100% all the time? The answer to the question is no. Actually, 80% time is better. 100% time, what do you get? A fat baby. Right? It's not healthy. Diabetes and all of that. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. You must have so a baby at home. It's the most healthy. You Even must us too. Right? Don't feed me 100% all the time. I don't need 100% right? Do you so, have a baby at home? I do have two, and that's that's when that's when I <laughs> I thought about this. Oh, the battery is just like babies. Right? So no over no overfeeding it, no overcharging it. And when it's low, uh, like 20% is starving. Like the baby, you don't have to starve the baby before you feed him again, right? And uh, so you can actually, and I don't know, when I was a kid, I was only allowed three meals a day, but apparently the kids now, the doctors say, hey, hey, feed them all day long, right? And that apple this hour and pie next hour, like every hour, give them something, it's okay, as long as it's not too cold, right? So that's exactly what's recommended as well. You know, charge it for, an hour, like a ride every time you've done the ride, you charge it for an hour and a couple of hours. That will really help instead of wait till the baby is so starving and dead. Right? You don't want that. And let them eat all day long, it's okay, as long as they're not 100% all the time. Right? Yeah, so that's most healthy. Yeah. Um, right, fussy, so. Fussy, what was the fussy part? The fussy part? Yeah. Yes. When it gets too cold or too hot, yeah. what happened to your baby? Yeah, you cry. It gets sick. It cries. Yeah. Well, except that it doesn't know how to cry. So, uh, and um, uh, so, 15 degree or higher up, better, right? So, don't you cool. for those who storage in your bike in the garage winter time, remove the battery and bring it indoor, unless your garage is heated, right? So, um, you want a room temperature. That's what it is. But when you use it outside, sometimes it's like 25 degrees, right? So, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, like one time, two time, occasional, you know, the baby's 100%, it's okay. I'm just talking about not all the time, right? And do we have to like, like kill so much brain power to try to do that? Maybe not, right? Like 800 cycles, 700 cycles, still a lot, right? What we don't want are 200 cycles out of it. You so have to it, replace the battery too. So, so we don't need to charge it 100%, you're saying? It's better not to, you know, like if you want to have a maximum lifespan of the battery. Okay. Like Tesla allow you to set and they will recommend that too, like up to 80% and stop charging. And how do you know if it's close to 100%? Five bars, each bar is 20%. So essentially what you want is anywhere two, three, four, right? You don't want to see one bar, you want to avoid seeing one bar, and you want to avoid seeing five bars. Yes. Now that's just a rule of thumb. Okay, but, but it's not gonna die. It's not that you easy. Don't charge it fully, then you won't go as far. Yeah, obviously, but generally you don't go as that far. No. Very few people go 100 kilometers every day. They're awesome. Your body deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what is this? Right, this is that's a that's a suspension thing. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's good to talk about this a little bit. And so your suspension fork is actually adjustable. So that's open and that's locked. Now it's a rigid ride. Okay. Uh, I, I stopped talking about this just because we're all recreational riders mostly, but except for commute. Oh, you don't need, you don't, don't need it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No. Okay. So I'm going to leave it open so you get a maximum suspension comfort. Now walk assist, let's see, take a look at the walk assist, the last thing, walk assist. So the walk assist, this is important, like the walk assist to work, um, there's, um, yeah, again, this is a whole bunch of uh, safety measures. It's not that easy to make it, it doesn't come off accidentally. They try to prevent it going too easy. Mm -hmm. It has to be very sure that you want to walk it. So first thing happen is you have to engage 
any of the assist levels except for off. When it's off, the walk assist cannot be activated. You want to make sure that you kind of consciously aware that your machine is hot, eco anywhere. Then you can activate the walk assist. You see the screen now should change it to walk, right? But if you're off, nothing happens. So eco anything, doesn't matter what level it is, then you have the walk assist. Secondly, you see the walk assist is going to time out. You don't walk, it's going to time out, return to normal. Okay, so before you time out, you have to hold the plus, and that's what that little plus meaning. See the bike try to walk now, try to go. And what happens is you have to keep holding it. Again, keep it's a little safety. Yeah. Of course you have to. Keep holding if you plus, don't okay. keep holding the plus, the bike just flies off. If your hands are off the okay, handlebar, right? So, yeah. so another safety, if your hand is felt safe, if your hands are off the handlebar, the bike is not going to continue to go. You don't have to chase your bike. Okay, all right, so the walk assist, uh, that's how it works. One, any of the assist levels. Second, activate it and walk it before it got timed out. Third, hold the plus. And I see it walking up the stairs just becomes so easy now. I just have to guide it a little bit and it just walks itself. That's good. Yes. Very cool. Another thing that the manual doesn't mention, I will say, it, um, don't let the bike walk you, walk the bike. Mm -hmm. The Bosch motor is actually very, very gentle. It doesn't hold much to, doesn't take much to hold it back. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go with it. Yeah. Uh, by walking the dog, there is another analogy. Like just, 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 just hold it back to your own comfortable pace. Right? It doesn't take much to hold it. And it won't hurt the motor if you hold it back. You will just know to drop off down grade. Now getting down the stairs actually is more difficult than walking up now. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, that actually concludes the tutorial questions. Oh, thank you very much. That was great. Nice, okay. And your menu is in the charger box.